Hotels, as Pia said, this can't be a more beautiful place to have this uh, memorial. I, I want to speak um, a little bit about Bill 156, but before I do, I'm sure many of you have heard the story um, about what happened to Regan that day, but um, being there myself and, and, and Regan was a friend of mine, I, I feel the need to uh, tell her story because there's lots of miscommunication out there as to what happened that day. And um, I, I think that we it's our responsibility to make sure that we get the truth out there. Um, so I, I just want to tell you that that day, uh, it was it was a really hot week. We were already having vigils at Fearman's quite a few times that week. Um, and Bill 156 had just passed, making it illegal uh, for us to bear witness at the slaughterhouse. And Regan was really pissed um, about that. And uh, we were talking that week, and even though we were having some vigils, she's like, we should have a special vigil and tell the people um, you know, how unconstitutional this bill is. Uh, you know, they're already silencing the animals and now they're trying to silence us. And uh, we were talking with Animal Justice and Animal Justice said, you know, maybe we can, we can uh, arrange for an extra vigil this week at, at Fearman's and they were gonna come and document and talk about Bill 156. Um, unfortunately, something happened and Animal Justice wasn't able to come that day. And uh, I was talking to Regan, I'm like, you know what, you've been to Fearman's quite a few times this week, maybe you should just relax, uh, take it easy, I'll go. And I, she said, all right, because she was busy. And, um, and that morning I arrived at Fearman's and there was nobody there and the bill just passed and I could just feel the tension, you know, that, um, there. And I was like, I want Regan to relax, but I'm also think I'm gonna call her because she was one person that you could always depend on. And so I was just about to call her and I look at the car next to me and Regan was, was in the car next to me. And I said, what are you doing here today? And she's like, you know, I just knew that you probably needed some help. So I wanted to be here. And the vigil was like any other vigil, especially in July. There was about, you know, we were there for a few hours. There was about 20 trucks. The pigs were in extreme, uh, uh, they, they were just in extreme conditions. They were, they, you know, they don't have sweat glands. It was a very, very hot day. They were in a lot of distress that day. And uh, for maybe like the, the first 20 trucks, most of them just knew we were there. We gave the peace sign. We asked for two minutes. They did what they were supposed to do. They stopped um, regardless of how they, you know, perceived what we did or if they agreed with it or not. They had a respect for our lives and they stopped and let us bear witness. After the two minutes, they knew that they were going to go into the slaughterhouse and, uh, and we'd be on our way. So that was most of the trucks that day. In fact, the truck right before um, that killed Regan, the trucker right before, I, well, I was the one, I was the safety marshal for that truck and I, um, I was standing there, you know, holding the truck while the others uh, gave water to the pigs and the trucker put his car in park and he got out of the, the cab and I was kind of nervous because that's not normally what happens. And uh, he came over to me and he started just asking me questions about, you know, I understand. He basically started by saying, I understand why you're here. You're here to show compassion. Um, and it was really touching and, and, and Regan and I both kind of locked eyes on that. It was very, it was very profound what he just said. And he just asked like, how do I know for sure that that's water? And we had a conversation like, why would we be here if it wasn't water? We, you know, it's a hot day. And he's like, yeah, I get it. And he actually shook my hand and it was during COVID um, and everything. And we were just about to leave and we thought, okay, like we, we bore witness. We took lots of pictures for animal justice and, and for people to see the suffering these animals go through before they, they're executed. And we were just about to leave, but we saw one more truck. So we thought, okay, we'll just bear witness to this one more truck. And uh, the, the truck came up and this is the, the, the trucker that killed Regan and he came up and he didn't, normally what they do, and we've done this hundreds, I don't know how many times. Uh, normally what they do is they kind of come in and they, they gingerly go around the corner because there's a bunch of humans there and they don't want to run us over. Um, and they kind of go around the corner. The marshal asks them to, to wait for two minutes and then we bear witness to the pigs. And then we, the marshal tells everyone to get onto the sidewalk and then the, the truck goes into the slaughterhouse. Um, but this trucker saw us, he was in the, the lane to turn into Fearman's, but he decided to get into the, to the out, to the, um, outside lane into the left-hand lane rather than the right-hand lane to make a right-hand turn. And we waited there and he just stared us down. He didn't want to come in. Um, so we, we agreed that even though it was, it's much safer when the drivers stop in the, in the proper lane so that we don't have to go into traffic. Uh, we decided this guy's not, he was there for about a few minutes and he wasn't coming in. 
So we said, okay, let's just start the timer and let's bear witness. So Regan said, okay, well, I'll be the safety marshal. So she was a safety marshal. The rest of us went to bear witness and, um, and the truck, and so the, and the trucker was stopped there. Like he was stopped for two minutes before we even started. He was stopped for two minutes as we were giving water. It was, he was at a complete stop. Everything was fine. It was just like any other trucker that just said, Hey, what's two minutes. Then the, um, the two minutes was done and we all got a uh, step back. And I, I wasn't actually looking at Regan. I was looking at my, my phone. Um, and, uh, but I knew she was on the other side cause she was the safety marshal. And then I just heard this acceleration like I've never heard before. Uh, the truck was right next to me and he put his foot to the metal. And it was really confusing because like he was stopped, like he was stopped for four or five minutes and then he just put his foot to the metal and I immediately looked over at Regan and what I saw was her standing there like this. Um, and I immediately started running over to her and he floored it and he ran right into her. So I don't know, I don't understand. Um, the police came, they interviewed all of us. I don't understand this charge of it, not criminal charges because I've run this over in my head a million times in two years. I mean, did he have a heart attack? I mean, I don't know. Like, I mean, the family hasn't found out what happened in there. But how he cannot be charged criminally when he was stopped at a complete stop and for whatever reason he decided to, to floor it and he didn't only hit her, he saw her, he was, we were, he was standing there for five minutes. He not only hit her, he ran her over and he kept going. He didn't stop. So is he incompetent like, or was it intentional? I don't know, but I'm just telling you what happened, right? And you try to figure out a, a plausible reason why this is not a criminal charge. So he ran her over and he dragged her body 20 feet into the slaughterhouse. And as I was walking over or running over, I just saw a trail of her blood. It was horrific. How can someone do this? What possible reason can this not be a criminal charge? If anyone knows, the police aren't telling us. If anyone knows why, regardless of what she was doing or what he agreed with or what he didn't agree with, you're driving a commercial truck. You know we're there, regardless of where we are on the sidewalk, not in the sidewalk crossing. You know we're there. You drive gingerly in there and make sure we're safe. Why do you floor it and give her no chance to move out of the way? Why did when I run to the other side to see his face, he never got out of the truck? Who kills someone and doesn't get out? If you didn't intend, like, I don't, I don't, there's no, it's just not normal for someone to kill someone and not get out. Even when you know, I called 911 knowing, seeing her body, knowing she couldn't possibly be alive, but it's impulse. It's, it's what you do. You try to help. You call 911 in some miracle that somehow she could be saved why did this guy that accidentally killed someone not stop not get out not try to help not figure out what the hell is going on so that day wasn't just about andrew blake the 26 year old driver that killed regan russell it's also about the whole criminal system the halton police the crown attorney what the hell's going on a beautiful woman was gun was run down in cold blood and there's no justice. I'm going to, I, I just wanted to tell you um, what happened that day. And I just wanna tell you about an important initiative um, that's happening with animal justice right now. Animal justice is suing the Ontario government over a troubling ag gag, agricultural gag law that was passed in 2020 to conceal animal suffering together with journalists Jessica Scott Reed, an animal advocate and photographer, Louis, uh, Louise Jorgensen, animal justice is asking the courts to strike down multiple sections of Ontario Security from Transport and Protection Food Safety Act for violating the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, most notably the right of freedom of expression. This is the first lawsuit to challenge the constitution of an egg gag law in Canada. 
The A-Gag law passed in Ontario in 2020 makes it illegal to go undercover to reveal animal abuse, food safety, ma- f- food safety risks, and unsafe working conditions that are pervasive in animal agriculture. Ontario's egg gag law prohibits entering farms or slaughterhouses under false pretenses, make it in, making it illegal for journalists, animal protection advocates, and others to get hired at a farm or slaughterhouse to document and publicly expose animal abuse or other unlawful act- activities. In addition, Ontario's egg gag law targets peaceful protesters who stand on public property outside slaughterhouses to bear witness to the suffering of animals in transport and document the conditions of animal and transport trucks. This law makes it an offense to interfere or interact with animals inside trucks. Our government doesn't regulate or, or monitor animal welfare on farms. So hidden camera footage is often the only way for the public to learn the truth about poor conditions and shocking animal cruelty in the food supply. This dangerous law was, was pushed by the powerful farm lobby to silence whistleblowers and conceal animal cruelty from the public. We are hopeful the court will strike down the troubling ag gag law and make it clear that Ontario and other provinces cannot in- interfere with charter rights to protect profits of the meat industry. As a journalist, my work relies heavily on information gathering by these workers undercover and animal agriculture settings. These be- those bearing witness to animals in transport trucks and those willing to blow the whistle, said Jessica Reed Scott, a co-applicant in the case. Without activist and whistleblower information, many of the widely read published stories would have never been told. I feel great concern about my ability to do this work going forward. Ontario's egg gag law interferes with the right to gather information on matters of public interest and to peacefully protest on public property. Activists at the core of what activities that are at the core of what the right of, of freedom of expression protects, says Caitlin Mitchell, Mitchell, staff lawyer at Animal Justice. Not only does the egg gag law infringe the rights of journalists, advocates, and researchers who engage in these important activities, but it also violates the public's right to know how animals are treated behind the closed doors of factory farms. Undercover footage shot by employees, whistleblowers at farms and slaughterhouses has led to animal cruelty convictions and has revealed shocking animal suffering in Ontario, including workers kicking, punching, and beating animals. Animals crammed in tiny cages, uh, botched euthanasia, and improper slaughter, filthy conditions, and workplace safety concerns. A November 2020 expose by Animal Justice showed abuse at an animal pig farm aired on CTV's W5 and prompted an ongoing animal cruelty investigation by authorities. Egg gag laws were first passed in the United States at the behest of the powerful and law farm lobby. But these laws have been struck down as unconstitutional restrictions of freedom of speech in Idaho, Utah, uh, and Kansas. Canada legal experts have warned that Ontario's egg gag law is similar similarly unconstitutional. Alberta passed Canada's first egg gag law in November 2019, followed by Ontario in June 2020, just a few days before Regan was killed. Manitoba and Quebec are considering egg gag laws, and the meat industry is lobbying for these laws across Canada. And just an update on what's going on from Louise that couldn't be here today. She said June has been the busiest month in In our case so far, we have been busy cross-examining all 18 of the government's witnesses, which include representatives of government, the agriculture industry, and the trucking industry. All of the witnesses are being cross-examined as well. Over the summer, the legal team will be drafting our written argument. The hearing is scheduled for October 25th to 26th. So I'll just end on this. Please, um, from what you've heard today from a witness that was there, please tell Regan's story. Correct people when they're wrong. Um, and please support organizations like Animal Justice that are fighting to to get rid of these this unconstitutional bill that I think was partially responsible for killing Regan. Thank you.